Leonardo's AI image generator allows you not only to use a text prompt, but to also use an existing source image along with your text prompt to generate a new image. Let's look at how it works. I'm on the Leonardo homepage and I need to get to the image generation page, which I can do by clicking the big pink button over on the right that says create new image. I can also come over here and click this big image generation button that's toward the left or image generation under AI tools on the left menu. Any one of those will work. Once we're on our AI image generation page, we're just gonna click on this image guidance tab right here. Once we've clicked that image guidance tab, we need to get an image to be our guide. We can drop this down right here and see our recent images, or we can click this sort of upload button and it'll give us a lot more options. This page will pop up and we can either upload an image from our computer, pick another image that we've already uploaded. We can go to our generations, things that we've already created. We can go to the community feed and use an image that someone else has generated, or we can go to our follower feed if we had anything in there. We're gonna go back to the community feed I'm going to grab this image right here. Now, if you're not on a paid plan, you have one image to use here in image guidance. And the only option you have in image guidance is image to image. If we drop down this menu, you'll see that Leonardo has all kinds of different ways that you can use image guidance, but all of them except image to image are just in the premium plans. Now, I get a little warning over here, this yellow thing that says that my dimensions don't match. And that's not a problem. I can just come right over here to advanced controls. And since this is saying it's four to three, we'll just drop this down and I will pick four to three. And now my little warning has gone away. Now we can type a prompt and we need to tell Leonardo how much we want it to weigh this image in the generation. Up here in the prompt, I think we'll say something like, we'll say a cabin on a hillside and I'm gonna leave that strength at 0.3 for the moment. And let's say generate. Now to see our generation, we're gonna to need to come back over to the generation history tab. Fortunately, it'll leave this little green box that says on next to the image guidance tab. And that's telling us that we're using a source image with image guidance. That's important because if you're finished with this image that you're working on and say you're trying to create an image of a car or a person, it would be referencing this image still that we used as a source and things probably wouldn't be working the way you expected. All right, so let's see what we ended up with. It kept much of the original image as far as we have the mountains in the background, we have this green hillside, we have those beautiful clouds in the blue sky, and that was kind of what we were looking for. This one took a little bit of a different angle, but it definitely got us our cabin there. Now we had that set at a strength of 0.3. So let's see what happens if we move that up to say 0.9. I'm still gonna leave the prompt as a cabin on a hillside. We'll hit generate on that. And now we really don't have a cabin on our hillside. And why might that be? That's because by setting this at 0.9, the highest possible strength we can, we told it to adhere extremely closely to the original image that we provided it, the source image, this fella right here. And as you can tell by what we got back, we got back almost that same image. So this strength slider has a huge impact on how your image to image generations come out. Now I've been using the Leonardo Diffusion XL model. You can use other models. We're gonna drop that down and we're gonna pick 3D animation style. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off alchemy because I'm now down to 50 tokens for today and I would like to conserve them a bit. So let's turn that off and let's go ahead and drag this strength back down to about 30 and hit generate. I see I ended up with a little warning over here that I should have changed my image dimensions before I started and I did not do that, but that's okay. You can tell it was not the end of the world. So let's take a look at what happened for our 3D style. I think that came out pretty darn good. These would look great for an animated video. Let's switch up our source image a little bit here. This time I'm gonna go back to the community feed. Okay, we're gonna grab this guy right here. There's certainly a style to this image, so we'll see how much of that we can get to carry through. 
I'm going to say a young man with green hair and an earring because I don't see an earring in that picture. So I want to see if it'll add it. So I've got this little warning over here and I know what it's telling me. It's saying it wants me to go to 640 by 832 because there's a star right there. But if I hit that, then I end up with this little caution that says, hey, this image size is off. So I come over here and I change it to 23, which is what it's telling me at once. And I end up back there. So I could go in a circle all day. We'll skip all that and I'm just going to generate. Let's go over here and see what it comes up with. I forgot we left our 3D animation style on, so this is what it came up with. It definitely added our earring. I don't know what those earrings are. Maybe those are lima beans or something. It carried through on that green theme that was going on and it added an earring to every single one of these images. Now let's switch it back to a different model. I'm going to go with Kino this time. Generate. Now this is still referring to that original image, this fella right here. Just because we generated 3D images, it didn't pick that up. That's our original image. And this is what it came up with. And the only uh, thing that I changed about this was I told it with an earring. I see the earring there. And that definitely fits my prompt of a young man, but it also very much fits that style of the image that we started with as our source image. There are so many things that you can do with image to image, depending on how you tweak the prompt, which model you use, and how much strength you give your source image. The possibilities are endless. Now, if you I have a paid subscription for Leonardo, you have all of these options available to you for image guidance, not just image to image. The best thing to do here, let me show these to you on this screen. So this is depth to image and the left here is the original image. And then you see some results that were created by using the depth to image type in the image to image generator. Ooh, that was a mouthful. If you want to create that depth and dimension in your images, the depth to image is a pretty handy way to do it from an existing image that you already have. You also have edge to image and it has identified in the original sort of the outline of what this object is. And then based on the prompt that was entered is keeping that outline of that object and changing what's within the shape. And it does the same thing in result number two here. Now it does affect the background, as you can tell by the colors we've got on the wall here. If you like finished coloring books, but you don't like to go through the hassle, line art's your friend. You can take just a line art drawing and suddenly make it a colorful masterpiece with the right shading and highlights and all that good stuff. Normal map is handy for 3D graphics. So you start with a 2D image, you add textures and depth, and you end up with something that really does appear, well, realistic. You've even got pattern to image. You can start with a pattern, and then based on the prompt that you type in, you can end up with results that incorporate or overlay that pattern. You also have pose to image, and this is where you start with a pose. So you've got this guy in this particular pose, and then you use your prompt to take a man standing in this particular pose and create whatever you want. It's not even the same face or person there. It's just the same pose, and you've changed everything else about this image. QR to image, you can take the plain old black and white QR code and you can dress that thing up and keep it still completely functional, but have it look a lot cooler. Sketch to image lets you take a very simple sketch, as you can see here, this thing that sort of looks like a cat, and turn it into something that really looks like a cat. And last but not least, we have text image input. So you start with just plain old text there on the screen. I mean, black and white, how simple could it get? You add your prompt, you can turn it into something like this. If you're not using Leonardo AI yet, and you'd like to have some fun generating these images and videos and whatnot, and save yourself some time finding material for your content creation efforts, there's a link in the description. It is an affiliate link. So if you end up going with a premium plan at some point, I may receive a small commission. The free version might be all you need, or as you get in and start playing around, you might want to explore more with other features like I did and want to keep creating more and decide to upgrade. And I very much appreciate when anyone uses my affiliate link. Thank you, sincerely.